Okay, want to record on the, uh, I, you got the iPhone recording? Yep. You okay. Know. All right. Let's, uh, let's let the room populate for a second and see if the, this time it works a little bit better. Yeah, everyone let us know if the quality is good this time. Oh yeah, we have more people. Okay. Oh, way better, they say. Okay. Hey everybody, thanks for coming back. Uh, Bezat here, live from Montreal, Montreal HQ. It is my second day back in the office. I've uh, spent the last two weeks in quarantine, as you guys may know. So we are here. As you can take a look around, it is, it is a, a hectic site uh, here in the showroom. We've been doing a lot. Photo shoots today. We've been shooting Spring Summer 21. We've been shooting Batman. Uh, the Batman collection uh, launches next week. We've got the Bane Backbreaker Selvage, uh, the first release of the Batman Capsule Collection, Batman Naked Famous Denim Capsule Collection. Uh, so we've been doing that. Spring Summer 21 photo shoots. If you guys want to see Spring Summer 21 previews, we will do that today as well. Uh, we're working on Fall Winter 21. I've got, uh, I've got, for those people who've been waiting to see, the New York City exclusive denim. I've got a fabric sample here to show you so you can see what the fabric is gonna look like. I already showed you the, uh, the, the pocket flasher and the leather patch in some previous videos. Uh, so today I will show you the fabric. Uh, I would show you the pocket flasher and the other things, but my computer is not, I don't know, it's not another computer, I don't, anyway. You're probably not gonna see today, but at least you're gonna see the fabric. Uh, so, what else have we got? We've got the beautiful wall of fade behind me. I'm, I'm glad to be back, and I'm glad to be surrounded by all this faded denim. So if you guys wanna see what a particular uh, denim is gonna fade into, we've got tons and tons and tons of examples. And we've got a new giant pile of faded jeans. And this has come from you guys, from our call outs, when we've been asking for you guys to send us your faded pairs of jeans. Uh, this is what we do with them. We're gonna archive these. We're gonna take photos of everything and then they will live the rest of their days on our wall of fade here in, in Montreal. We're gonna send some out to New York City so that we can fill up that wall as well. Um, so. For some of you who, who may not know, we do offer a buyback program. If you've got a, a pair of naked famous denim jeans that have been worn in, they're retired, maybe you don't wear them anymore, maybe you've outgrown them, um, um, or you know, whatever. Uh, if you're not using them, we would like to use them. We would like to archive them forever. Uh, what we're looking for are you know, mostly faded pairs. So if you have a well-worn, a well-faded pair of jeans, let us know, send me a message, uh, here on Instagram in the DMs or send Garrett at Tate and Yoko a, uh, a message in the DMs and then we'll arrange a shipping label for you and then we, when we receive the jeans back we'll give you a, uh, a coupon code for 20% off your next pair of Naked Famous Denim jeans. The, th the same thing applies for unbranded brand. We're also collecting pairs of unbranded. One day I would like to have every Naked Famous jean that we've ever made shown on this wall. Uh, I'd like to have a faded example and we are working towards getting faded examples on Tati and Yoko and a fade gallery on nakedfamousdown.com so you can uh, take a look at what your jeans fading potential is going to be. Farmer Jonestown House Kool-Aid asks, got any Kasuri samples? Kasuri, yeah, there, uh, there's, I know there's, there's one, there's here, one here. Right here, that's right. This is the Kasuri, uh, so you can see that right here. Might be hard. Is this the Kasuri Stretch or the Kasuri? It doesn't actually make much of a difference um, because the Kasuri Stretch and the Kasuri are the same fabric base. The only difference is the Kasuri Stretch has 2% stretch. So the, the fading potential is, is identical. So you can see that with the Kasuri, you get a lot of streakiness. And that's because the yarns themselves have different amounts of indigo penetration along the same yarn. So when it fades, it's not going to fade at the same pace. Jameson Keating says, I'll replace those Gokus on your wallet at the end of next year. All right, let, it, let me know. I'm looking forward to seeing them. This is, uh, this is our faded pair. This is one of the ones that we had done for us. Um, I wish we were still able to do that, but uh, this one is not authentic in the sense that this was not worn in by a person. This was uh, done by hand. Do we have any left-hand twill fades? Of course. Oh, sorry. Midnight left hand twill. Not yet. 
We're looking, we're looking forward to receiving some of those one day. Do you have any faded duck? Faded duck? There's one right here. Here's a beat up duck. Um, you know, the duck isn't going to fade as heavily as uh, like an indigo pair is going to fade. But what's going to show up on a pair of ducks is the amount of work that you put into them. It's kind of like when you fade a pair of the natural seed. They're not, so, they're not really going to fade. They're going to get dirty and they're going to, they're going to, you know, take on uh, what you've put on to them. Did the MIJ8 sell out yet? I don't think that they're completely sold out, but I think a lot of the popular sizes are gone. Um, you have one unit left in Weird Guy. Risa says there's one unit left in Weird Guy. Six in and six units left in the Super Guy, and that's, that's it on Tatian Yoko. If, if you are missing a size, rather, if there's a size that you don't see on Tatian Yoko, hit up Naked and Famous Denim New York. They might have it. So hit them up on, on Instagram and they will arrange a shipment for you. They don't have a, a website yet that you can buy directly off of, but that is actually coming soon. But right now, hit them up in the DMs and they can arrange it. Mr. Rackle says, anyone send in Toxies yet? Hope to get mine there eventually. This is a pair of the Toxic Avengers. Um, not faded by a person. Garrett and I just went ham with this. Uh, went ham on this with, uh, with some sandpaper um, because we wanted to have a slight, uh, you know, we wanted to have an example to show uh, to folks. So uh, this is what we did with them. It's, uh, yeah, this is, this is not the best example, but it is at least better than, than nothing. Any Okayama Spirit 3 fade examples? Oh man, uh, I don't, oh wait, I think we saw one in here. That's an elephant. I don't think there's... Maybe there. not. This is, oh, this one is gnarly. Um, elephant 5, the dude who beat these up did, an, did, did quite the job on them. Can I see the back? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, these ones really stuck out. When I got here and I looked at that pile, I was like, whoa, who did that? So, uh, yeah, this is really, really neat. Look at that texture. Any puzzle weave fades? No, but Brandon wears the puzzle weave. No, he's wearing, is he wearing the wearing crossways? The crossways. Yeah, he's wearing the crossways. Um, no puzzle weaves yet. Not yet. Okay. Any new fabrics? To show that you haven't shown yet. Yes. So let's start off with the new, the newest of the new. So this is what we're going to be doing for the New York City denim exclusive. Streaky, slightly slubby, and that selvage ID. It's got the New York City flag colors. So this denim will be available exclusively at Naked and Famous Denim New York. Indigo Warp, White Weft. Look at, look at, take a look at how crazy that is on the inside. Broken twill. Any reason why you did broken twill? No, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually surprised myself. I didn't know that it was going to be broken twill. Uh, so broken twill, big slub. That's not something you see every day. Uh, I guess that was a, a, cho a choice Brandon made. So there you have it. I learned about it the same moment you did. I did not know that. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, any faded jackets around? Um, no. No. We need some more faded jackets. I'm just lo loving this fabric. What's going on here? Yeah, this is fantastic. Looks really cool, man. Okay, well, I'm intrigued. I'm a big fan of this. This is good. This will be worth the trip to New York just to get a pair of these. I'll tell you that much. Wow. How stretchy is it? Not very. Yeah, wow. Brendan did not tell me that. Cool. 
Not something you see every day. Take a look at the inside. Do we have some right hand tool for for reference? For reference. Well, just well, this is not uh, this is uh take a look at the end so you can see no twirl direction twirl direction so this is going in like a zigzag as you can see hopefully you can see that but yeah that's the brand new New York salvage denim New York exclusive and this is the new Kasuri coming out in the spring so this is the spring summer 21 style the new pale Kasuri much brighter blue to begin with. So for those of you looking for those summer blues, we've got a summer blue with a mix of Kasuri. More spring, summer 21 teasers here. Okay. Mm, any Elephant 9 faded pairs? I don't think so. Not yet. It's still too early for that. So my Elephant 9, Jolly Green Giant says my Elephant nines are fading like crazy. Well, post some photos and I will share them with the community. Wait, is... you accept faded jackets like you do jeans? Of course. This is the, the Fox Brown. This fabric is crazy. I gotta find the woman's version so I can... I've shown this off before, but what I really love about this fabric is the way that it washes and it fades. So, for the men's, we're gonna sell it raw. Women's, it comes rinse washed. This is an unsamphorized 10 ounce, I believe it's 10 ounce uh, denim. But what's really neat about it is that it's a gritty, lightweight denim with such a like beautiful tone to it. That's a little loose thread. So dark indigo, the brown comes through the front face of the fabric. So you have a nice warm tone to this. And the brown comes from the natural brown cotton weft. And the natural brown is a, a type of cotton, it's an American grown cotton called fox fiber. And this particular jean uses two types of fox fiber, fox fiber brown and fox fiber green. And what's really neat about fox fiber green is that it gets darker as you wash it. So check that out. This is going to be one of the coolest denims we've ever released. I am very, very excited for this one. So you've got this golden brown. It gets to become like a, a warmer, nuttier brown over time. And uh, the indigo itself, I mean, just take a look at that. Look at that nice blue hue that you get. And that's with just one rinse wash. Okay, how ha says something tells me that Elephant Ten is a remaster of a denim not considered in the Elephant collection. No, but it is a remaster. I'll tell you that much. It is a remaster. I'm not ready to show you Elephant Ten yet. I'm not really ready to show you Fall Winter Twenty One yet uh, because we haven't even gone through all of Fall Winter. Sorry, Spring Summer Twenty One yet, and we'll we'll get through a lot of these things. Um, but. We still have a lot of time. Uh, this is another really, oh man, there's just a lot of stuff. Um, Rose City Indigo asks, what's the weight on the new Kasuri? 12 and a half ounce. This is the purple core. So there is a purple core denim coming for those of you wanting, uh, who have purple aspirations, that is. Um, this is a long time coming. I, this was supposed to happen uh, last year, but the yarn supplier for our core yarn uh, went out of business. Uh, so we had to find a new supplier for that. We did. So this was a little bit delayed. Originally, it was supposed to be out a year ago. It's coming out for fall, winter 21. And for those of you, I don't have a faded purple core to show you, but I do have a faded green core on the wall. So you can see here, 
just what a faded core denim will look like. The base is the same. So that denim, the green that you see behind me, started as this dark indigo. And as that indigo started to fade, the color of the core yarn started to show through. This is the green core. This will be nice and purpley. Purpley. Purple speaking, people eater. Speaking of purpley, Let's take a look at some of the Batman uh, stuff, because I know a lot of people are excited for that. Um, let's start with Bane, because that is coming out this Friday. We've got Bane, the Bat Breaker Salvage, 16 ounce, extra beefy denim with 2% stretch. So you've got, the thing about the stretch is, is that you don't really feel it in this denim. It is still a rough and rigid denim. Um, some ASMR for you. So it's got a nice heft to it. You've got that venom colored selvage ID. The 2% stretch in here really helps the fact that this is a heavier weight denim. And if you want to be comfortable in it right away, that 2% stretch is really gonna help you out. You can see that the denim is quite slubby. There's a lot of texture going throughout the fabric. You've got the black rivets, venom colored selvage ID, the nightfall button. Each jean in the Batman collection will have its own top button. With Dragon Ball, everybody shared the same Dragon Ball button. With Batman, everyone's going to have their own unique button. We've got the co-branded logo on the inside. With Bane, you've got, of course, his own leather patch. So we've got uh, the Bane leather patch here. It's on a 10-ounce buffalo leather. And you have the Bane mask embroidery on the back. And, of course, you've got that high-gloss uh, pocket flasher here showcasing the Batman being broken in half. This comic book cover for me, that is very nostalgic. I, I remember, very, very vividly remember seeing this in the comic book shops when I was a kid. And just, I don't know, there was a lot of, there was, this was a very exciting time for comic books. Um, you know, it was uh, like ba uh, Superman's dead, Image comics were like really hot and like it was the new cool, uh, uh, you know, comic book brand. Uh, and this was going on, of course, you know, the, the, the Nightfall story arc, Azrael taking over Batman. Uh, if you, anyways, I'm, I'm not, look, I, I don't know, hmm, I'm not, I, I, my Batman knowledge is very, there's the thing, this whole collection is basically based on my Batman knowledge and, there's a lot that I know. There's a lot that I don't know, of course. But uh, it's all from, like, just comic book collecting and reading from when I was a kid and watching shows. And, you know, from, from Batman animated series to 1966, uh, you know, live action uh, Adam West Batman. Uh, I really enjoy that. I, anyway, let's, 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 let's move on. But um, Bane Batbreaker Selwood, that comes out this Friday, November 20th. Check out nakedandfamousdenim.com. Uh, if you go to the news section, uh, find the, uh, the, the Batman post, and then there's a complete listing of all the retailers worldwide with this collection. Um, any questions, Garrett? Uh, Vancouver, alone, Vancouver Alone says, my green cores are so good, bless you. Fantastic. Well, again, anytime, I, I always want to see your photos, so please... Take some photos, put them online, and uh, I will share them with the community. Devin21 underscore 95 says, you have any natural indigo or green cast on the fade wall? Natural indigo. Um, we have one downstairs that's amazing. Yeah, I think it's, what do we got here? This is, that's a dirty fade. Who's, are these mine? I don't know, I don't remember. These are mine. <laughs> Uh, so these are, wow, these are my dirty fade salvages. I was looking for these, and that's where they are. These also look like mine. These are mine. These are mine too. These are my MIJ3s. Well, that's a, that's a, that's green. a green cast denim right here. No natural indigo, though. No, uh, I don't, ha the natural, I guess we have it in the store. Um, we can do a post next week. But uh, I don't have a natural, I have a left-hand twill, I don't have the natural indigos. 
it's kind of funny how I recognize, like, I just saw them, and I'm like, those look like mine. I could, you can recognize your own fades. It's kind of like recognizing your own cats. I mean, you know your cat or your animal, even though there's other animals that look just like them. Will the next Okayama spirit be unsanfrized? Mm, yes. We're planning it right now, and I, I'm, I'm going to go with yes. Okay. Let's take a look. Actually, another thing I wanted to show off today was what Garrett's wearing right now. So we're gonna have one, to... more, one more Batman question. Okay, let's do it. Is the dynamic duo black or gray? I'm a bit confused about the color. It is indigo. So the dynamic duo selvage is indigo on the exterior with gray on the interior. So just like Batman's outfit. So you've got the indigo with the gray. So we wanted to match Batman for this style. And then, I mean, the leather patch is fantastic on this one. That great button. And then you've got the, uh, the action words, Selvage ID. A different label. That's right. On the Dynamic Duo Selvage, you have the old school Batman logo with Naked and Famous M. So this is the only one that has the old school logo with it. Let's see any more McDonald's collaboration. Oh man, one day. <laughs> I, I already collaborate with them on a, on a semi-regular basis, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, update on the Naked and Famous pocket knife. I'm waiting on a new EDC from Raw Denims. Right. Um, they are coming. Risa, yeah. when are the pocket knives going to arrive? They're, oh. Uh, Risa says we're still a couple of months away, so we will keep you posted. Cool. I think we're caught up. Okay, so now that we're caught up, I want to give you guys the world premiere of the 40-ounce denim. So we've got Garrett here wearing the 40-ounce. So Garrett, you've been wearing these mm -hmm. for, for quite a while now. Tell me, it's been... what has it been like wearing the heaviest pair of jeans in the entire world? It has been an experience, for sure. I would say it's a whole different animal than the 32 ounce. So if you don't know me, um, my other account is Wizard of 32 ounce on Instagram. And I guess for the past four or five years, I pretty much almost exclusively wore the 32 ounce almost every day. You've um, worn how many? You've I worn have two through... pairs. I have two pairs, like two broken in pairs. One unwashed uh, that I wore for about a thousand, thousand days. And then one that I wore for about a year, maybe a year and a half. That is like more of a vintage fade. So washed a lot. But anyway, so over wearing those, you know, you get used to it and it's not a big deal. But when we were making these, I was like, oh no, I'm, I was getting a little bit nervous. Um, because I was helping uh, make them and and then trying them, uh, actually turning them inside out was the first, you know, sign that this was going to be something really intense. So when I had the 32 ounce, you could turn them inside out in about 30 minutes, or not 30 minutes, 30 seconds, maybe a minute to turn them out. It, it, was, it was hard to get them inside out. I turned these inside out for the first time because when you make jeans, you make them inside out and you have to flip them in out like so that they're the right way. And um, took me about 10 to 15 minutes per leg <laughs> to flip them inside out. <laughs> so it was, it, and it was a struggle. Like I was using all my strength right. um, to, to turn these inside out. And I'd say like the first two days were just brutal. Um, so as you can see, they're a little bit oversized and that's not an accident. If you've ever worn, you know, like 25 ounce or up, you know that it's probably a good idea to, to size up a little bit just so you have that extra comfort, a little bit extra wiggle room. If it's like skin tight or like not, if it's tight, like you, you can get away with on a lighter denim, you will get destroyed. Like the back of your legs will bleed, like you'll get chafing, it'll just be horrible. So these are a little bit bigger, but even on the first whole week walking, 
this part was like cutting in and like rubbing on the back where the combs are. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's literally like two combs. Right. So like if you compare it to a normal like lighter weight denim, you might have like 10, 15, 30 little creases. This is so thick and like you get That's like it. two. <laughs> Let's Almost take a look at that leather patch also. Oh yeah, there's the patch. Oh my god. So for, for those of you who are like, mm, why is this guy wearing suspenders? Like, that's weird. It's not because I'm in love with suspenders. It's because this patch is so thick that when you put on a belt, it totally changes the way your belt is. So um, that's why I'm wearing the suspenders. Right. And check out the, the button. Yeah, we had to custom make this button. So... There we go. Sorry about that. Look at that. And then if you look closely, you can see it says... 40 ounce. 40 ounce is actually upside down right yeah. now, but... 40 ounce. And then there's a really big... Giant zipper. Heavy duty zipper in there. Right. And these have to be a zipper. Yeah. There's no way around it. Wow. Yeah. So, you are wearing the only pair of 40 ounce jeans in the entire world. Yeah. World's first in the whole entire universe. That's right, in the entire universe. Yeah. The heaviest denim in the universe. Yeah. That's what we like to say. Uh, you've got the cross over here on the belt loop. And the reason for that cross is because, well, it's, the denim fabric just gets mm -hmm. so thick. Let's show them the, sh let's show them the salvage. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this for real. Like, I'm not going to exaggerate, but like, it is actually this stiff to turn... Turn them inside out. Yeah. And like you can see, look how thick. Yeah. Um, the yarns are yeah. crazy fat. Look at that. Let's get up close. Like from the shuttle change. Yeah. There you have it, guys. So that is the world's first look at the 40 ounce denim. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be asking me. When are these coming out? Well, uh, we'll keep you posted. Making these is, is an is a unbelievable challenge. And so Garrett is essentially testing out everything here. We're gonna figure out what we need to fix, how we need to do things mm -hmm. based off of Garrett's experience here. So we will have these available in a very limited quantity and uh, stay tuned. But this is the first look. This is Garrett's entry into the Indigo Invitational. Mm -hmm. We're going to start posting images hardcore uh, very soon. So yeah. now that we're, we're back together and the Salvage Foundation is here to, together. I forgot one more detail. The rivets. Right. So these aren't like just off the shelf denim rivets. These are, they come as a pin. Right. And you have to cut them. And you have to cut it to length and then... Smash like, it down. Smash it down, yeah. So we had to... Basically, everything on this is custom. There's no stock parts. There's no... Well, nobody makes stock parts yeah. for, you know, denim this thick. That was part of the challenge. Even sewing it. There are no, there are no denim sewing machines for denim this thick. So there you have it, guys. That is the 40-ounce denim. If you want to see updates on this... Follow Tatian Yoko, follow Wizard of 32 Ounce Denim, and we're going to keep you posted. And uh, that is it. That's the world's heaviest denim. Garrett's got all the answers for you regarding that. Hope you, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I've, I've been really, a lot of people have been asking for 40 ounce updates. And, you know, what better update than, than getting it from the man himself? All right. Did you check any of the questions? I, a lot of them were uh, just praise of these of these jeans oh yeah perfect for winter i will say um yes they are perfect for winter but they're not insulated so if it's really cold like it is here in montreal yeah luckily everywhere inside is warm yeah you know that's the that's the beauty of being in canada in the winter is that most homes are insulated and offices are insulated quite well and pretty much everyone's cranking the heat so that's the kind of the weird thing is like what you get inside from outside and you just want to take off all your layers because you're so hot. Uh, and then you get outside, you're wearing all these layers. So it's just this, this game you're playing constantly of like taking on, putting on and taking off clothes all winter long. 
But the, the real test, though, is going to be wearing these in the summer. Yes. Right, because part of the Indigo Invitational is wearing a pair of jeans for 365 days. This is my entry into the Indigo Invitational, and I am not wearing a pair of Indigo jeans for this. I am representing black denim for the Indigo Invitational, and I'm also representing the Salvage Foundation. But uh, this is my, uh, I guess, my one month in. We were up in the warehouse today, so I got, a, you know, I was getting dirty, and uh, I'm probably going to get a little bit more dirty as, uh, as, as the weeks uh, continue on. We are getting ready for Black Friday. Uh, that's right after the Bane uh, release. We really we kick into Black Friday. I will tell you this much right now. Our Black Friday sale will not start on Friday. It will not start on Thursday. It will start on the Wednesday of that week. So uh, stay tuned. Instead of our regular 24-hour special, we will have our Black Friday sale launch and that will go all the way from Black, uh, sorry, the Wednesday all the way till the Tuesday uh, and expect some incredible deals, bundle savings. Uh, more information on our Black Friday sale will be coming soon. You definitely want to, uh, you definitely don't want to miss out. Will the 40 ounce come in black? Uh, no, I can say no right now because we don't have black fabric. We have all the 40 ounce fabric that is made. We have it all. Um, so, there is no black denim version of it yet. Maybe there will be one day, but for the moment, there will only be an indigo option. Uh, has the 40 ounce become more comfortable since you started? Yes, it is pretty wearable now, but still substantial. Right, it's, it's a five and a half pound pair of jeans. It's, it's a lot. Uh, I mean, if it's, it's like wearing three to four pairs of jeans at the same time weight equivalent uh when is the huntsman expected back in stock black friday so that's going to be part of our black friday promotion uh the huntsman will be available and they will be on promo to start all right i think that's all the questions for now okay um you know what i'd like to do uh, I, 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 I would like to cut live stream a little bit short today, just because it's been a long day. I apologize. But we do have some really, really great snacks that we've been waiting all day to try. I'm, I'm not even joking. Like, we've been working all day so very, very hard. We wanted to end the day with a live stream and then get into snack review time. So I hope you guys uh, don't mind us cutting it a little bit short. But we did get some really fun snacks that I think you guys are going to really like. Uh, and uh, Risa is grabbing one of them right now. So we'll, we'll answer your denim related questions while we're trying some of this stuff out. But uh, I hope you enjoy uh, uh, snack time with us today because today we have Ritz sandwich crackers, spicy chicken sandwich edition. Uh, that's right, Japan exclusive. Um, I guess it says the same thing on both sides. But uh, if, you've, if you've ever had a, a, a Ritz Bits, these aren't Ritz Bits, these are full size Ritz, but uh, you know, the cheese version is usually what they get. But uh, these have a uh, spicy chicken sandwich flavor. Uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. I found this at the grocery store yesterday. Coca-Cola Quebec maple syrup flavored. So this is the local Canadian Coke uh, that I wanted to try out. I think it's gonna be, I don't know if it's gonna be good or not. Uh, I am a big fan of colas. Uh, I've tried a couple of colas on Snack Review, and we have the Quebec version. We are back home in Quebec, La Belle Provence. So we might as well try the Canadian Coke version. And I'm going to try them in my new Fire King mug. A little bit of water in there. Um, this was sent to me by a fan. So I really, really do appreciate that. Uh, I love my vintage Fire King mug. Uh, a fan out there spotted one of these out in the wild and uh, was very, very kind and sent this to me. And I'm going to be using it today uh, for the first live stream back here in Montreal for Snack Review. It's got that great Snoopy uh, and uh, uh, great messaging here. But we're going to be drinking Coke, Coca-Cola out of that one. And Risa found this at the grocery store yesterday. Milkshake Cherry Bomb beer. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not a beer. I'm not an alcohol drinker myself. What brewery is it? Um, Le, Le Grimoire. 
micro brasserie. Yeah. It's amazing in um, like the uh, grocery stores here. There's so many different kinds of like microbrewery beers, and some of them are really weird. And this is the weirdest one that I found yesterday. So I'm very excited to try this. All right. Yeah. Do you have an ETA on the 40 ounce? No, no ETA on the 40 ounce. Um, basically the 40 ounce is going to get made when there's time between production because each pair pretty much has to be made one by one. There's no production line for this because every operation on this gene needs to be done with one single machine that we have. Whereas on a regular production line, we have specialized machines that do different operations. We can't use those machines to sew this fabric. So when there's time in our production schedule, our production manager is going to be making these to order. Black Cobra on Black Friday? No, but we will have some black denim options for you on Black Friday, I promise. Would you ever make a denim, a denim off-cut coasters? Denim off-cut coasters. Like um, circles, I guess? Yeah, I mean, does this work? I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to grip it. There we go. Um, would we ever make those? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. I'm just... Will you be restocking the 32-ounce black denim for this holiday? No. Oh. <laughs> this is not working What is well. the Arcteryx thing on the rack behind you? Um... Oh, this is a Tate & Yoko inventory. We carry a brand called Arcteryx Valence, which is uh, their top level um, product, I suppose. Uh, not I suppose, it, 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 it is their top level product. It's, we carry all of their made in Canada stuff, and uh, I'm a big fan. I have a couple of these jackets myself. If you want to find out more, check them out on Tate & Yoko, but... Um, these are some pretty incredible winter jackets. Uh, yeah, we're if, getting in new stock, so. If you're a fan of Arcteryx, anyways, we, this is just where our inventory is, but uh, Valence is their, their top end line, all made with Gore-Tex Pro. Uh, this is not the best way to display it. I mean, it's just been, <laughs> uh, anyways, learn more on their website. They've got better, they've got, uh, better photos than uh, the kind of jacket that I just pulled out of the, uh, the garment bag, but that's, that's what it is. Okay. Plot twist. It's a twist off. No, it wasn't a twist off. Was it? No. No, no, no. Right. I've, I've, yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> I just, uh... it, it smells maple syrupy. Anyways, let's open these up. Let's crack these open. Garrett, you're going to get in here too. This is yeah. a, this is a family event. Um, so we've got the Ritz spicy chicken sandwich flavor. Open that up. And they look like, you know, Garrett, you gotta get a smell of that. We gotta get your, but we gotta get your reaction here. Well, we, everyone has to have one. Yeah. So. All right. Oh. Right? It smells a little bit A little like bit burnt. Almost like a no. It smells like it does have a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a char. Yeah, a char mm -hmm. smell. And a little bit of the cheese, like the fake cheese. Yeah. That he's using the red cheese cover. I'm getting like a but. burnt backyard kind of. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, give it, <laughs> yeah, give, it okay. give it a taste, Garrett. Chicken, like, like spice flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the the spice that you use on fried chicken flavor. Like it doesn't necessarily taste like chicken, but it tastes like something that reminds you of fried mm -hmm. chicken, maybe. It has sweetness though. Mhm. Mm mm. Like a caramelly almost. But yeah, that is a good that is a good cracker. It's definitely it's better delicious. than the regular. Like, mm -hmm. if I could always have these, I would get this. Yeah. 
over the cheese pie. Yeah, because it's got that little extra spice, like the, you it know, does have highlight. spice. It does have a little tiny bit of a kick. Like this might be a spicy to a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, a three-year-old might find that mm -hmm. spicy. Okay. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try out the vanilla Coke. Risa, you huh? want to pour that out? Like, how much do you want? Yeah, give me the full cup and then Garrett's. Have a cup? Huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. I have my own cup. Yeah, Garrett's got a cup. Oh. I got the C handle. Nice. We are, we are big Fire King fans in this office. I'll just use a beer in it. Okay, you want this? Good, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Okay. Risa. So I'm not a Coke, Coke drinker. Yeah. So the professionals of Coke professional soda drinkers here. Oh, this is difficult. Can you guys like come closer? Yeah. Hey, you can come closer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but all right, how how does it taste? The maple syrup hit instantly. Less spice. Like, you know, Coke yeah, is a it doesn't bit have the bite. Yeah, no. It's very, it's, the sweetness is high. De like, it's good though. It reminds yeah, me is, it the is it the Canadian in us that are just, that's just being like, <laughs> maple syrup? Like, I like, I do like this. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think this is bad. But you know how like Pepsi's a little more sweeter? Oh. It kind of reminds me. It doesn't remind me, I still have that bite. It's not as sharp. Because the sweetness is, is, the sweet note is high, but this is a, yeah, I like this. This is maple syrupy. I gotta bring some of this back to Japan. Somebody is asking when you're gonna do those ghost pepper chips, bro. Oh, did we, we do them? We did, them we did them last week. Yeah. Yeah, we did them last week. We should do like a, a hot ones. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Inspired. <laughs> I, I like this. I would, I would have this many times. Okay. Yeah. Like, you, do you prefer it? Over I don't prefer cold? it, but I think, you know, if you're having a, if you're having a nice meal, mm -hmm. yeah, a nice meal, um, <laughs> you know, like burgers and like, you know, that kind of meal, you know, mm -hmm. casual, nice meal. I would like to have this also. I think this would be good for cooking with. Ew. I've really? never cooked with You pork. never cooked no. with Coke? No. Oh, cooking meat, like slow cooked pork? I've heard of this. With, uh, but... oh. I like cherry coke huh interesting cherry i think coke. i'd rather i like regular coke better i don't dislike this yeah good right i like regular coke better mm -hmm. i don't but i don't dislike this i like this it's like i like like i like cherry coke and i like vanilla coke this is also another mm -hmm. version of coke that i enjoy all right that's good all right mm. let's move on because we've got milkshake beer milkshake beer time all right you need to cleanse your palate with this <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's check this out. Let's get in close. Okay, let's see what color it is. Oh, it's a pink, like a light. Wait, what Coke was that? I missed it. That was a uh, maple Quebec maple. Quebec maple Coke. So the hometown team. We're here back in Quebec. In, in, in French Canada, um, we produce a lot of maple syrup in this province, so uh, that is the, uh, the appropriate Coca-Cola flavor for Quebec. <laughs> All right. All right, you wanna use this cup? I'm okay. Use this one's fine. Are you sure? Oh yeah. Okay. It's got like a pa pomegranate or a passion fruit looking color. Yeah, but it's a cherry. It does okay. smell like cherry. Get, wait, 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 get closer oh, together. Oh yeah, really yeah. strong cherry. Cherry bomb. So this is okay. a cherry bomb, cherry milkshake. Oh, so milkshake brewed with, with cherry tea, but it's a beer. Okay. So, cheers. cheers. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird taste. To me it tastes, and I could be completely wrong, I'm not a beer expert, but it kind of tastes like a watered down Pilsner, yeah, with yeah cherry, cherry, but yeah, hint of cherry. It doesn't have the milky taste I was expecting, 
You know, like I thought it would be more like a milky beer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have that. It's very light and smooth. And it's not like a cloudy taste either. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you enjoy this. This is good. When you're thirsty in a hot day, mm -hmm. you know, like it's when, very refreshing. Really yeah, refreshing. It, when you don't want to drink really heavy, you know, bitter beer, like this is this is a good. snack, like a treat beer. It's definitely mm -hmm. like a yeah, like a gross beer. <laughs> I think. A Pilsners are pretty watered down tasting already. Yeah, this is yeah. more watered down. It doesn't have the hoppiness. It doesn't yeah. have the yeah. For reference, like I'm a double IPA guy, so almost everything tastes watered down to me. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's very it's good. Like, yeah, it's good. It's, it's more of, nice. of a yeah, it's more of a, like a thirsty day drink. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah definitely a hot weather summertime. Yeah. Because the milk might kind of put you off from that and think, oh, it's not something you don't want to drink when it's really hot. But I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, the cherry tea portion really is the main lactose is the milk lactose right sorry lactose is in the milk quote milk beers to mellow out i think i don't, I don't know i don't know what that means does oh. it say lactose on it because i've it had lactose not. beers before but there's no lactose in there i i don't know what's in it it doesn't say it might just be called milkshake yeah yeah that makes more sense Maybe it has nothing to do with milk, so milkshake. Milk, milkshake is the name of the beer. Brings all the boys to the yard. Oh yeah. That guy loves. Okay. That guy loves is like the kind that could be drinking dirty water and still say, "Oh, tasty." Who? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you try fracture yet? Fracture. Fracture. Who makes no, that? I don't know. Is it in Quebec? I don't know. If if that's a beer that we should try, we'll uh, we'll look it up. Let us know. Send us a DM. Yeah, let us know. Uh, all right, sounds rad. Anyways, uh, yeah, I can give you. Okay. Well, uh, the final word. Um. I guess these are fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah. They should have these in North America. I don't know why they don't have them in North America. It seems like a taste. That North Americans would enjoy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Everyone loves fried chicken here. Everyone loves Ritz crackers, Ritz bits. Yeah. There's Ritz bits of cheese with peanut butter. I say this needs to be a North American product. Uh, if I was the head of Nabisco, that would be the first thing I would do. So uh, definitely want to try these out. If you come to Japan, you're going to be able to find these at the grocery store. Yeah. Not the I, convenience store at the grocery store you're gonna have to find these. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be like a limited time thing, but it's been around yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Though, so it's been around for a while. So I don't think this is going off the shelves. If you come to Japan, that should be a grocery store find for you. I do recommend there's a different because one thing about Japan is everyone tells you, oh go to the grocery go to the convenience store, the convenience store is the best, there's so many snacks there, there's so many snacks there, and there are so many snacks at the convenience store. But the grocery store has way more snacks. They just do. Am I wrong? Depends on the kind. Depends yeah. on the kind of grocery store. But yeah, like I mean, convenience stores all have the same things basically. Yeah. Whereas grocery stores, they have different selections. Like yeah. some grocery stores have like more limited time things and others have more like imported things or. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Yeah. Anyways, a lot more options at the grocery store I find. But uh, yeah, that's a grocery store find. This we found at the grocery store. I don't think you're gonna be able to find this at most convenience stores. I find that convenience stores here in Canada tend to set, carry the same stuff pretty much always, like Coke, you know, Mountain Dew, Pepsi, blah, blah, blah. This, although the, I would say that the, the grocery stores here also tend to carry the same sodas, but um, I guess just, there seem to be more of these kind of specialty colas and uh, soft drinks yesterday compared to the last time we were here. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe grocery stores here are... Are expanding. Yeah. I did, there's a lot more breakfast cereal here, I'll tell you that much. And uh, the beer selection was... Oh, that was amazing. Risa was very happy. Yeah. Yeah, but they have so many cool Japanese beers too. No, but it's, it's not actually widely distributed. So most of the microbrewery st stuff doesn't like, only a handful that gets like you know distributed to like 
uh, grocery stores or like convenience stores, like only a handful. And then uh, other than that, it's like you kind of have to get directly from the brewery or the restaurant who, you know, works with the brewery, something like that. So it's, it's way more fun here for me. All right, on that note, thanks so much for joining us on another Friday live stream. Uh, we're gonna get some much needed rest and relaxation and uh, we hope that you guys do too. Have a great weekend and we will see you guys again next Friday with another live stream. And uh, I guess we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Bye everyone. Bye.